Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first and the third problem from the latest street code weekly contest 381. The problem name is find minimum number of pushes to type word one and word two. Both of the problems are literally same, just the concerns are di different, but we'll try to find out one common solution for both of these particular solutions, like problems. Let us go to the problem statement first. It says that you're given a string word containing distinct lowercase English letters. As you can see here that it has some, you are given a word which has different lowercase English letters. Now a telephone keyboard has key maps with distinct collection of lowercase English letters. So as you can see, there's a telephone pad and every key is mapped to certain letters. You can say now, if you want to type a, you have to push that particular key one time for typing B, you have to push this particular key two times and so on. Now, what you're actually given is that you are allowed to remap the numbers like these letters on these keys from two to nine. So you can reorder. Okay. I don't have, uh, I think so. We have some examples. So as you can see here that they have reordered these things. So you can reorder so that after reorder, you have to type this particular word in the minimum number of pushes possible. So you have to push that particular key and you don't have to minimize it. So let's take some example to make it more clear, but that's the overall problem statement. You have to minimize the number of pushes. Both the problems, this push like word one and word two are literally similar. The constraints are that this has small constraints and this has like 26 and this has larger constraints. Okay, but we will find out a common solution because the problem and the logic for this is pretty much very simple. So what you can see here is that what's your main objective is you can like somehow move around these words on these keys. Now, as you can think of, if your word has a particular character that is occurring many more times, you actually have to minimize the number of clicks for it. So let's say if my, uh, you can say that if I take some example, if I have only E, E, E. Okay. Let's draw it out. Okay, let's say it is E, 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 and F. Now, what you have to see here is that if I somehow put E on this particular key, so I will push this particular key one time for one E, one time for one E, that is much more better to put E on the second place. So if this key has, let's say, A and E, like this. So to get an E, I have to push this particular key twice to get one E. I hope you understand. So you have to somehow see how many characters are occurring, how many times and whichever character is occurring the most number of times, mm -hmm. you have to somehow place them on a new key on the first position. Okay. So you have to somehow get the frequency of every character. So that is very much simple. You can iterate over this whole word and find out the frequency of every character agree. Now, whichever is occurring the maximum number of times, you have to first try to put all the keys on distant numbers. So let's say my frequencies are that E is occurring the first time, then it is F, then it is A, then it is, let's say K and so on. So this is the maximum number of time. Then this is the second, next maximum, this maximum and so on. So you have to first find out the frequency of every number and then sort them out by their number of frequencies are occurring in this particular world. Now I have to first put E on the very first, you can say I can put E on the very first uh, number, E here. And I can put F here because then it is much better because the next maximum. So it should be on the next key because that occurs at the maximum number of times. So I should put it in the next key. Then the, it can be A here. It can be like K here and so on. So I will first try to put all the maximum on the, from one, two to nine once. Then the next time I'll try to put the next key on two again and three again. So I have to somehow go in a serialized manner and try to sort them first and try to put in this particular keyword like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then two, three, four. So that is how. But now when I first try to put all the letters from two to nine in one go, so let's say I'll put all these, let's say then K, X, Y, Z, and B. Then the next character is C. Let's say I want to put C. So I will put C here, but now to get one occurrence of C, I have to put this, I have to press this particular key twice. Okay. So 
after putting all these keys, like all these mappings here, we have to find out how many occurrence we have, like uh, what is the number of times you have to push that. So we have to see that, like what this position is and for that particular position, if it is occurring at the first position or second position and so on, and then how many times you have to push that. So pretty much simple, nothing much complicated here itself. You have to just find out their positions and then just find out what is the position and that much time you have to push that particular button. So it is actually not dependent upon the constraints because the you can see that in both the problems, even the constraints are difficult, like different, like it, the first one is small, the other one is large. It is just directly greedy problem. You have to first sort them out, find out their occurrences, and then try to put it, place it on the keypad, and then find out. So trying to put in the keypad is O of N. Sorting is O of N log N. And then after sorting them out, we have to find out the total occurrence, the total amount of pushes you have to do. That is also like O of N only. So the total will be O of N log N, which can be directly used to do it for both of these problems. Okay. So that's the overall logic that you have to use for a particular problem. I'll take you down to the code part now that uh, don't worry about it. But both of the codes are same only for this, both of the problems. Okay. So let us see the code part now. It's pretty much simple, only very small code. So what we have done is that we have to first find out the occurrence of every character in this particular word. So we'll iterate over every character in that particular word and make a map out of it. So we have, because we have 26 characters, so we'll make a vector of 26 characters and find out the frequency of every character in that particular word and store it inside this ARR vector. So now we have an array of from zero to 26, all these occurrences, 26 characters, because we have from like lowercase English characters from zero to 26, find out the occurrences and store it in some vector. Now we have to find out the maximum one. So we'll find out the maximum one. So we have to sort it in a descending order. So descending order, we have to sort it like this. So reverse begin, reverse or reverse head. Okay. If we use R, like if we use begin, error dot begin, it will sort in ascending order. We'll do it reverse. So it will be like sorted in a descending order. Now we have to find out total number of pushes that we So for every character, so what we'll do, because we have sorted them out. Now we have the sorted. So every, so we have to see that the first eight positions will be pressed once to get their one occurrence. The next eight, why eight? Because from two till nine, we can plus. So we have keypads on, uh, like you have nine numbers, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eight numbers, eight positions. So we have eight positions on which I can place these numbers. So we, I, you can assume that we have windows of size eight. So any number that is lying in this particular window will be pressed once to get the occurrence. Any character that is placed in this window will be pressed two to get the occurrence. So we have to find out all these occurrences. So we'll iterate over all these characters, which is like sorted. And what we are trying to do is that let, let's say the first number, like the maximum number is occurring three times. The next maximum number is occurring, let's say two times. So this is occurring three times. So I will put it in the very first position. So all these numbers in the very first window, all the eight windows. So what we have done is that what all numbers in the first window we have, I divide by eight because so let's say I will be zero. So I will be zero means like the like it is in the first window. Okay. So it is in the first window and how much they have to press. So this will give you zero because I divide by eight will give you zero plus one. Plus one will actually tell you that I have to press it one time. And this is one time for all those first eight characters. We have to like all those eight characters in this particular window will you press one time and how much is there occurring? So let's say this is occurring. Let's say E is this. So E is occurring three times. So I have to press three times E. So three times I have to push that particular button to get three E's. So whatever is the frequency is that press this number of times to get the total frequency. When I go to the next window, it will become two. So this because I, let's say it becomes, so this is from zero till eight. Okay, zero till eight, this will be zero. If this is zero, zero plus one, that is one. I have to press it one time from nine onwards, or let's say from eight onwards, actually, because it is from zero till seven, sorry, from eight onwards, the eighth number from zero till seven, these eight are in the first window from eight till the next one, like 15 and the second window. So this eight one actually is in the second window. So I have to press it two times. So this will become eight, eight divided by eight, it will become one, one plus one, it will become two. So this two will be multiplied with this, that how many times this has occurred. And that much time we have to press that number to get that much frequency in that particular final word. And we have to press it like to count the total number of uh, pushes that we have done and return the two. That's a complete logic for this particular problem. We can go through it again. I'll like raise all these drawings. 
You can like go through this particular code. It's very simple. And I've used the same code for first and the third problem. If you still have any doubts, you can mention it in the comment box or this particular video. I will see you in the next one. Still keep coding and bye.